What we see in these rocket launch videos is the rocket is launched and it does not go uh, the, shortest, the shortest path. We are told the shortest path is a straight line from A to B. What we see is these rockets arcing out over the ocean and then in many cases actually coming back down when the video cuts. Uh, I have said over and over again, my equipment is good enough to film one of these things going all the way out of our atmosphere, and yet there does not appear to be any video of that occurring. Um, this is one more reason why I state that no one goes above low Earth orbit. As we watch this rocket taking two supposed astronauts to the International Space Station for two days, watch what happens. It's going up, but it's arcing hard. And what they've done is pulled a tight shot here so that you cannot see how much it's arcing. It's leveling off here, and right about here in this vicinity, it starts to go back down. Now, we know that escape velocity takes one hell of a lot of energy. I forget what it is, 7,000 something feet per second or whatever it is. Um, I've probably got that wrong. And, and look at this, right here you see the engines uh, lose their efficiency. Look at all that smoke coming out. But this thing is going down now. Um, to get back on point, a rocket launch should go straight up. It takes so much energy to get it there, and yet there is no footage that I have been able to find, that others have been able to find, of a rocket leaving our atmosphere, and it would not be that hard to film. Here's a rocket, supposedly has two astronauts in it, going to the fraudulent International Space Station, and what we see here is the rocket going back down. At any rate, we're told the rocket boost, the boosters have just fallen off, and then they cut away. So we see a rocket go up, level off, coming down, and then they cut away to instill this kind of stage-crafted image with their little stuffed animal as they're supposedly going to space. Now moving along here, as many are aware, uh, I filmed the lunar wave for the first time in 2012. We have had no official response from any source except one observatory in uh, Norway or somewhere that gave me a one-sentence description saying it's atmosphere. Here, Google has taken it upon themselves to put an entry about the lunar wave, calling it a conspiracy above search returns. So there is the first uh, official response I'm aware of. So here is the 2012 lunar wave footage. And regardless of whether or not I have described what I think is going on here correctly, or missed the mark, or come very close, the point I would make about what we have learned from the lunar waves and all the filmings to date is it has given us good reason to question the moon and what we have been told it is. Now on this channel there are very good videos that break down the energy pulse that occurs before this wave. Um, there's just a litany of information and what it demonstrates is we have every reason to question the moon which is what led me to do this. This is a thought experiment using Google Earth. Um, when I first thought about this and I began to implement it, it really astounded me. And the crazy thing is, is that there are other people out there, good on them by the way, who went out and did their own experiments, putting representations of the full size of the moon on the earth and doing a 40,000 40, mile jump up. And what you find is, logically, common sense does not allow what we have been told about the moon to be true. Now what I'm going to do here is take a known naked eye object called Aristarchus Crater. Quite often, you, you can only see it uh, when the moon is near full, and it's like a little white dot that's generally on the left side of the moon. Um, and it does rotate up towards the 12 as the night goes on in some places. But what I did is I went and looked at pictures of this, and I traced it out, and it is less than 41 miles but the white kind of smear in some images goes up to 41 miles. So the example that I'm going to use here is a 41 mile white representation on the Earth of the Aristarchus Crater. And by the way, I have done other clips that demonstrate no two pictures of this crater look the same. And that is just ridiculous. Anyhow, let's zoom down here and I, for added effect, I placed this crater in the, the national park called Craters of the Moon or whatever it is. So here I am in Google Earth measuring it and I will show you that it is roughly 41 miles across. Again, this is a listed naked eye object that we can see on the moon. So if you have good vision or glasses, um, when the moon is near full or full, you should be able to see this little white dot called Aristarchus. 
So what we're going to do here is jump up 40,000 miles away and see if we can see it because Google Earth will not allow us to go any higher than 40,000 miles. Here we are at 40,000 miles and I can no longer detect that crater and yet the moon is six times more distant than this shot that I am providing. So there is logical common sense data that demonstrates the distance of the moon doesn't match what we can demonstrate. Here we have a picture of the eclipse. Now look on the right side. You can see the sun showing through the darkened lunar disk. Now the blue line that comes up shows the lunar disk or what we are told is the moon covering the sun. The red line that comes up shows the solar disk. So look at that right area. This has been predicted and demonstrated many times and suppressed. What you are seeing on the right side is the limb of the sun showing through the limb of the moon, or at least that's what we are told we are looking at when we're seeing a solar eclipse like this. There are many examples um, from old Royal Astronomical Societies and other astronomers who have witnessed near an eclipse things showing through the, the, sol the lunar disk or near the new moon. So again, we see these firsthand evidential things that allow us to call into question what we've been told. When you take something as simple as South America with map projections and satellite projections and begin to compare them, you will find what I found with the Aristarchus crater on the moon. No two are the same. In other words, they are all valueless in terms of getting a real image of the place we live, the place we call home, this world. And what that basically means is that it all needs to be questioned. We see so many people on YouTube now heading out with lasers to test for curvature of the earth, taking long telephoto or telescopic shots to do the same thing, questioning the globe, and yet what the community as a whole is doing is belittling this effort. Look at Florida right here. Ridiculous. And belittling that effort makes absolutely no sense. 